Hey ladies, it is Erin here and welcome to our session on building your team and the Mary Kay Four Point Recruiting Plan. So before we get into that, why is team building so important? Now, this is the fourth piece. If you watched some of the other segments, we've talked about um, booking and getting leads. We've talked about coaching. We've talked about holding parties and appointments. And so what is this fourth piece of working full circle, right? We book, coach, sell, recruit. So we're going to talk about this recruiting piece. And first, why is it important? Because um, some of you may not really be interested in the recruiting piece, and I understand that. But why is it important? So first of all, if you do want to build your team, it is just smart. It is smart business to build your team because it is another avenue. It's the second avenue of income in a Mary Kay business. Now you can make fantastic income through the sales of this product. In fact, you can pay your bills. You can support yourself on the sales of this product. But if you want to make thousands and hundreds of thousands, or you want to promotion, you want to move up the career path, you want to earn a car, you want to become a sales director, you have to build your team. A lot of the very, very rich financial rewards in this company come through building your team and greater platform comes through building your team, greater, greater circle of influence, um, come through building your team. And why is that? Well, when you, you know, build your team, you are teaching a woman how to take her Mary Kay business and use that to bless her life, her family's life, and her entire circle of influence. And so you are helping women empower themselves through the Mary Kay business plan and you're growing our company. So that's how that works, right? So it's just smart business because you're maximizing your income when you build your team. Starting with the first team member, you start making income. Now, again, through the sales of the product, Mary Kay is not a recruit, 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 recruit company, which is one of the things that sets us apart from a lot of other direct selling and network marketing businesses out there, which are focused on recruiting and just have a ton of people who are, you know, Salesforce members, but just really use the product themselves. We are sell the product and then find women who are also interested in building Mary Kay businesses at whatever level that is. So first of all, just smart business. That was an aside. Just smart business. Now, why is it important even if you don't want to build your team, even if you're not interested in moving up the career path? Um, and that's fine. I wasn't interested in that when I started. Well, why is it so important? It's important because you might be you know, the woman sitting across from you or the woman you come into contact with, you might be the only um, Mary Kay she ever experiences. And so, you know, we don't advertise. A lot of people don't even know that Mary Kay is still around. Um, and so if you don't share with her, she might never know that this is an option that's available to her ever again. And so it's less about you and it's more about her. Even if you don't want to build your team, you have no idea what the person sitting across from you is looking for, could use. She might need an opportunity like this or have been looking or praying for something like this. And if you don't share with her, how is she going to know? So um, just by that very piece, you could help someone else. And even if you don't want a lot with Mary Kay, she could do amazing things with it. And it could be exactly the thing that she's looking for. So it's so, so, so important. And again, if you are someone who wants to really build a solid Mary Kay business, you know, I heard this analogy that Mary Kay is like a robo and on one side, one row, one or is the selling and on the other side is the recruiting. And typically we find that we're naturally stronger in one area. So either the selling port portion or the recruiting portion. But if that's all you focus on one or the other, then you're going to be like a robo with just one or going in a circle, moving really fast, but just going in a circle. You're moving, you're going in a circle. But when you both of those pieces work together, I don't even know if that's how you row a boat. Um, but one of those both, both of those pieces work together. That's how you move forward. Okay. So recruiting is important. Now, why do people not share? Um, so just some things that I want to like clear up real quick. Sometimes people don't share because you think that you're going to have like a whole nother level of responsibility when you feel like you barely can, you know, take care of your own customers. How on earth are you going to help a team? And it is not your job 
I'm going to free you right there. It is not your job to train or coach or make sure your teammates are successful. Um, it is your sales director, me, my job to train her and teach her. So when you add team members, you are not, you don't have a greater level of responsibility. You can be their encourager and their cheerleader, but it's not your job to. So you get to just reap commission from team members, but you don't have an added level of duty just by building a team. Okay. That's me. Another thing is, again, people feel like they have to be responsible for someone else's success so that therefore, not just that they have to train them, but then if that person is not, not successful, then it's their fault your fault, like the recruiter's fault. And that's not true. You can't, you are not responsible for someone else's success. You are not responsible for what someone does or does not do with this business. We all take personal ownership over that. Okay. You're not responsible. Um, and then lastly, sometimes people don't share because, well, two other reasons they don't share because they don't feel successful. They don't feel like they're doing things well with the Mary Kay business. So how are you going to recruit someone when you don't feel successful? And again, it's not about you. It's about them. It's about her. It's about what she wants. You cannot let your own insufficiency, your own feeling of lack in your business, your own perceived low performance influence your sharing because it is not about you. That's actually, it's an insecure mindset, but it's also kind of selfish. Like at its very, very root because the focus is on you not on her. When you look at Mary Kay as a whole, look at people who are doing, you know, look at all the incredible success stories, pull from that and have that give you courage and confidence that this business does work. Um, even if you're still figuring it out. Okay. So just, it's all good. And then lastly, people tend to be scared of what the other person will think. So, um, that she won't be interested or, you know, she's super successful in what she does. So there's no way that this could be for her or, um, you know, I'm intimidated by her or what have you. So just that fear, that fear of her saying no, or that fear of what she'll think. Um, but again, you can't control that. You can't control the other person. The only thing you can do is share. And again, you also have no idea what's going on in her world. You have no idea. People have, can look all put together and like everything is a okay on the outside when really, again, you don't know what she's praying for. You don't know what she's looking for. You don't know if she needs a way out. You don't know if someone needs extra money. So all you can do is share. And when you're coming at it from a purpose of, you know, offering this as a gift, because I'm going to teach you, we're not looking for just anybody to join Mary Kay. Now we don't rule anybody out, right? We do not rule anybody out. We share with everyone, but we pursue the women that we want on our team, that we want in Mary Kay. So when you pursue someone and you're intentionally asking someone if they would be interested in giving their feedback on a Mary Kay business, it's very much a compliment because we do not just want anybody. Okay. So when you're coming at it from that angle, like I think really highly of her, I think really highly of you. And I really would love, you know, I think this is something where she not only could Mary Kay potentially be a blessing to her, but she could be a blessing to Mary Kay. Um, it changes things and it's less about your focus and, you know, I need her to finish my team or I need her because I have this goal and more about I'm going to present this to her. It's a compliment. And if she says no, it's all good because it was a compliment. No harm, no foul. Okay. So that's why it's important. Um, and recruiting is a muscle like anything. You need to build it. The better you do it. Um, I'm sorry. The more you do it, the better you get. So who do we look for? We share with everyone as I'm going to teach you, but we pursue the women that we want. So who do we want in Mary Kay? We want women who are sharp. What I mean by sharp is not necessarily that they have a ton of, ton of money. <laughs> they're wearing designer clothes. No, no, no. Sharp just means like they are put together. Um, they're successful at what they currently do, whether that is they work, they work in the home, they are a mom, they volunteer, they are good at, you know, they work hard in school, but they have some, like they're good at something that they do. Okay. Um, busy, busy women get stuff done. I'm just going to say it. Busy women 
figure it out. They're better at time management. Think of a time, I, I go back to when I was in college and the semesters where I had a super busy schedule, I was way more on it. I procrastinated way less and I was more productive with my time because I had to be versus the semesters where I didn't have as many credits. I procrastinated way more because I was lazy and I, I just didn't get as much stuff done. So busy people get stuff done and are able, practically speaking. So for example, someone who has a car, you don't need a car, but having a car is good because you can make deliveries and you can get to and from places. Now, does that mean you can be successful in Mary Kay without a car? No, but again, it's just helpful um, and mentally willing. Are you mentally willing? Because some people are able, like they have the skill set, they have the resources, they have the warm, warm market, um, but they're not willing, I guess is what I mean by mentally able. They're not willing to do what it takes. They don't really want to. So you have to have both of those pieces. You have to be capable and have, you know, the ability to learn, um, but you also have to be willing. Okay, so the, those two things work in conjunction because I will take someone who is willing to figure it out and learn all of those things over someone who is capable and is not willing. Okay, right? You need the willing piece. That's critical. And then coachable. So someone who's willing to learn, who's willing to ask questions. Because again, we don't expect anybody to come in with sales experience or beauty experience. Like I did, I was at an event last Saturday and they did a poll of the sales directors like a step forward if you had any sales experience or beauty experience. And out of 15 sales directors, none of us had any prior beauty experience. And I think one person had prior sales experience. Okay. So you learn all of that in Mary Kay. Um, so sharp, successful at what they do. Busy is good. Um, it's okay if you're not busy. Um, but then critically, the critical pieces are, are they willing and are they capable, willing and able? Okay, that's what I mean by that. Um, now again, does that mean that you can't, you know, be sharp? You got to be careful because you never want to prejudge. So some of my best team members have been women who at the party where I initially met them came in sweats with like their hair up in a bun and no makeup. But they were willing and they wanted to do it. And you're looking for other other things. So you, again, you don't want to prejudge. That's why I say we are going to share this Mary Kay opportunity with everyone because you have no idea. However, when you're pursuing someone, you want to be a smart business person and you are looking for people who cert certain fit certain molds because the truth of it is on the other side, if she's not willing then, you know, to get a starter kit or find $100 to get a starter kit, then she's not going to be willing to, you know, find women to do 30 faces with, right? It goes, it goes hand in hand. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. Fun, sharp, positive women. We want to bring great people into this company. I once heard someone say, um, if you like you, and that's part of the beauty of it. Forget what I was going to say, but that's part of the beauty of it is you get to select who you're going to work with. It's so fun, okay? So how do we share? What is the Mary Kay recruiting process? Where, four point recruiting plan. So where do you find these women? Closest to the product. Your strongest recruiting is gonna happen close to women trying the product. Not texting a ton of your friends and you know recruiting them. That works, but like your long-term success is gonna be built on recruiting people close to the product, okay? So if recruits are in your customer base, they're women who love Mary Kay products or have tried them at your facials and your parties. Um, why is this so important? It's important because again, we sell the products and then we recruit. If we just recruit, 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 then no one's gonna be selling and you're gonna have a weak business. You're gonna have a weak foundation. But when you sell the product, you get a strong customer base and in turn, you have women who love Mary Kay products and therefore understand them and therefore want to share them with other people. So you have a team of women who are also selling products, not just buying them for themselves. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how I started. But you're going to see we're not trying to sell starter kits. Okay. We are not just trying to like get people to buy a hundred dollar bag and that's it. Um, I don't know if you know this, but you don't make any money 
when you when someone joins your team. You don't make money until they order because ordering is Mary Kay's, you know, trigger because they don't require us to keep track of our sales and submit them to the company. But ordering, besides the initial inventory order, if you do that, Otherwise, after that, if you're ordering, it's only because you're selling product. So you are paid commission only when your team members order product um, because that means they're selling. So the stronger orders you have, the stronger team members you have, okay? So you want team members who are ordering. And again, we're not just selling starter kits. Um, That's not smart. That's not smart for you. It's better to have a strong customer base and then recruit from there. Okay. So they work hand in hand, hand in hand, hand in hand. I will say the further you get someone away from the product, it, you know, it's just a little bit harder to share with them. You want them to love how their skin feels. Okay. So this is how we do it. The Mary Kay Ash four point recruiting plan. There's four point parts, four points. One is at your party, your facial, you ask the hostess who's coming. That would be good. Number two is you share your eye story. Number three is that you offer free product to anyone who refers someone who joins your team. And number four, you select one to two people to share more about Mary Kay with. Okay, so let's flesh this out. What does this look like? So part one, asking the hostess who would be good. So again, we're recruiting at the appointments closest to the close to the product. Um, and so this would be like you walk in because we get to the appointment early, right? Because we got to set up in advance. So we get in and we're chit-chatting with the hostess and you're saying, oh, tell me about your friends who are coming and, you know, blah, 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 Sarah, Sally. I'm like, tell me about that. Well, Sarah, she is a mom and she has four kids and she's super busy and she, you know, blah, blah, blah. And Susan is, you know, we go way back. She's the one who always like looks so fabulous and is really into makeup and she's just telling you about them. So you would say, okay, I'm so excited to meet your friends. Tell me who of your friends coming do you think might be interested or do you think might be good doing what I do? Like, I'm just curious. Just super chill, off the cuff. Super chill, off the cuff. We're not being scripted. We're not being like crazy. Just chill. Just relax. Ask question. Who would be good? And she'll tell you, you know, oh, I'm not really sure. Let me think about it. Or, oh, Susan, she'd be amazing. And just right there. You know, and you can even say like, listen, you know, I'm excited. I'm going to, you know, tell a little bit about Mary Kay. I'm working on earning my red jacket and I'm looking for women to join my team. Who of your friends coming do you think might be good in Mary Kay? Like, or could use, you know, some extra money. Okay. So you're asking the hostess who she thinks would be good slash who could use some extra money. Okay. Then you're at the appointment. Now, if you are doing just a facial, you could, and you know her. You could flip-flop it and have it be um, something like, if you know her, because this is not your first time meeting her, like, hey, have you ever thought about doing something like this? That's it, all right? Um, If you're a total stranger and you're just getting to know her, you might not want to lead with that question um, because she's going to be like, what is happening right now, okay? So for your hostess or people you know. Now, number two is sharing your I story. Your I story is your story of why you started your Mary Kay business and what you're working towards. And so an easy way to think about that is the acronym PDA. And that's your pre-Mary Kay, your during Mary Kay, and your after Mary Kay story. And it should be short, it should be powerful, and with it, you wanna paint a picture. Now, an example of this would be like, And you do this towards the beginning of your appointment. So you are sitting down and you're asking people to tell more about themselves and it comes back to you and you say, you know, I'm so happy to be here today. I want to tell you a little bit about um, how I got involved with Mary Kay because I don't know about you, but I love hearing women's stories and how they get to be doing what it is they're doing. So, you know, before Mary Kay, um, I was a college student. Now, my story, an aside, my story is a little different, you guys, because I don't really have a before Mary Kay because I joined when I was 18. So, you know, my before really working my business, even though I was already a consultant. So I would say something like before really getting involved with Mary Kay, I was a college student, was really focused on school and my degree, and I ran track. And I originally started because I loved the products that you guys get to try today, and I wanted the discount to be honest. And I thought I could sell to a few of my friends. And so that's what I did. I sold to a couple of my roommates here and there for a few years. And that was great. And that's the beautiful thing is we don't have quotas. 
But I realized very quickly that I wanted more than what the corporate America world that I was pursuing would give me. I wanted more choices. I wanted more options. And I wanted to live my values out loud. And my values are God first, family second, and career third. And even though at the time I was not dating anybody and had no kids, I knew that in the future that's what I really wanted. But being able to have an income was also important to me. And so I started working Mary Kay on the side because I saw it as a solution. You know, I never saw myself selling skincare or cosmetics or teaching women about their skin, but I saw the opportunity and I saw it was a really amazing vehicle to help women. And so that's why I started. And um, after joining Mary Kay, you guys, I fell, I mean, well, after really working my business, I've just totally fallen in love with it. I love these products. I believe in them. And I was able to... Um, become full-time in Mary Kay, which just basically means I was able to make enough money doing my side hustle that it became my main hustle. So I've been doing only Mary Kay for the last six years, have earned a few cars, um, and it's just, it's been incredible. So um, that is your short, powerful story, okay? And with that, I recommend that you tailor it to your audience. So It doesn't mean you change your story, but it changes the details that you share with them. So like if I was sharing this story with a group of older women whose kids were all grown, I wouldn't focus on the college portion of it so much. I might share more about how Mary Kay has served me after college. So I would just touch very briefly on I started my business in college, um, but really started focusing on it as I got older. You know, and just tailoring the details. Whereas if I'm talking to college students, I'll focus a lot on how I did my business in college. Does that make sense? Um, Because again, you want to relate to the women that you're talking to. And when you ask them to tell them about yourself, tell them about themselves, you have a better idea of who they are um, and what might connect better with them. Um, So you want to establish that connection and you want to practice, you guys. Practice, practice in front of the mirror, practice on your way. But this should be less than two minutes. Like your eye story should be less than two minutes. You don't want to talk a lot. Like you don't want to be the one just blabbing, blabbing, blabbing at the beginning of your appointments. You want to get right down to it Um, because that's what they came for. They didn't come for a lecture on Mary Kay. Okay. Um, And now, if you feel like you're brand new or you don't have a lot of success to share with Mary Kay, that's okay. Tell them that, you know, your I story could literally be, you know, I, before joining Mary Kay, um, I worked in, um, at a, I worked at a bank and I went to a, a party and, um, got to experience the products and I fell in love and I was really hesitant about starting my business, but I thought, why not? You know, I love the products. Why not share them with a few other women? And the extra money was really appealing. And so I got my starter kit and I went from not knowing anything to, um, learning and figuring it out along the way and or it could be you know and so I just got started two weeks ago or I just got started last week and you guys are some of my first faces and um, thank you so much for helping me start my business and um, give your opinion on these products and I'm working towards or I'm just excited about seeing where this opportunity takes me so again it doesn't have to be it just has to be truthful and it has to be It just has to be truthful and it has to be something that you can share with conviction. That doesn't mean you have to be, if you're not like a super bubbly person, that's okay. But people can tell even if you are more quiet or even if you are super boisterous, people can tell when someone is being genuine and someone is being serious about what they say. Okay. Um, another thing you can do is pull from someone else's success. So if you don't feel super successful or you don't have something to share, then you can say, you know, and I'm building my business and I'm so excited. You know, I, I, you could earn free cars in Mary Kay. My friend and recruiter has earned a few cars and I just love that you get that mentorship in this business, you know? So just, 
does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I'm recording this video, so it's not like you can nod back at me, but I hope you're nodding and saying like, yes, Erin, that makes sense. Okay. So share your story. Stories make people know you. Share that you're doing this for your children. Share that you're saving for a trip um, to go to take your husband. Share that you are paying down debt. You know, share a little bit about you because then Again, this isn't about you, but it will make you connect with these women. And what you're doing is you're planting seeds of what a Mary Kay business might be able to do for them. Okay. Now, after that, you set it up. And this is just a little sentence that you can insert that I think is helpful. So you share your story and you say, so I'm about to stop talking and we're just going to focus on you guys. You know, you came here to be pampered and experience the products. And, um, but I just, I just want to share one thing. And that is that we find that in every group of women, there's at least one person who would make a really good beauty consultant. So you guys, who do you think that will be? And you just kind of ask them. And sometimes they'll tell you, oh, it's Sarah. It's Sarah. Sarah, you're going to do it. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Like, are you guys crazy? But it kind of like puts a little nugget in your brain, in their brain. And even Sarah, even though she's saying that, she's like, yeah, I would, I would kick all of your butts. You know, she's thinking, right? Like it just, you want to get people thinking. So you kind of set it up. Ha ha. Like, I'm just kidding, Sarah. We won't twist your arm. You know, it's chill. But again, it's nuggets that get people thinking. So then at the end of the appointment, um, we do have you share. So you're going to share marketing. Now, the best way to learn how we do this is to come watch me do a part of your class or come to the studio or come to one of the events that we do or text me and say like, Hey, Erin, when are your appointments coming out? Can I come observe you? Cause that's the best way to learn how I really share marketing. Um, but typically what I do just a little quick, re quick, quick recap is in the table closed. So you know how we do it, right? We go through all of the sets and we have them write down their wish list. And so I'll say, so, you know, option one, you guys, is that you always have the opportunity and the chance to be my customer and I will spoil you. I will love you. I will take such good care of you. Um, and I would love for you to be my customer, but there is, there is just one other, one other piece. And I want to tell that to you because I realize you're probably not interested at all. But if I don't tell you about this option, it's not like we advertise. And so you'll never know about it. So I'm just going to tell you about the starter kit. So this is what you get if you join my team. And it's $100. And I just want to tell you everything that comes in the starter kit. And so I'm pulling it out. I'm showing my products and I'm lining them up. And I'm saying, so you get two full-size miracle sets, two. And you get a full-size oil-free eye makeup remover and a full-size ultimate mascara and a full-size satin hand set and all five shades of CC cream and a full-size translucent powder. All in this beautiful bag with all your mirrors and your trays and catalogs and samples, enough to do 30 faces, and it's $100. Now, if you're thinking, you're thinking, wait, that miracle set, one of them is 110 I can spend less money and get all of that? And the answer is yes. Now, because an aside, remember, we don't just sell miracle sets or sell starter cuts. So I'll say, yes, that is right. And the reason it's like this is because, you know, we find that a lot of women don't do things because of fear, whether they'll admit it or not. And so we want women to feel comfortable and confident getting a Mary Kay starter cut and trying something like this, knowing that there's very, very low risk. And if they love the product, worst case scenario is they could use it anyway. But this is designed for a woman who is at least willing and interested to see what this Mary Kay thing is all about. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to just ask me questions. It'll help, it helps keep me sharp. It helps me train. What would you want to know if you were contemplating getting that $100 starter kit today? What would you know want to know about a Mary Kay business? So you guys, I love doing it that way because the $100 starter kit kind of hooks them. And then they really start asking questions. Like hypothetically, if I was curious, how do you make money? Or I'm super busy. What would that look like? And you can just answer honestly, realist, you know, honestly, from your own experience. And I always have tickets. If you don't have tickets, cut up pieces of paper and just give them to them and have people write their names on them. And then at the end, collect them and you just do a drawing for like, I mean, you could do whatever you want, like a half off mascara or a little tube of hand cream, whatever you want to do for people um, 
asking questions. But in doing that, you don't have to memorize a ton of information and you just answer what they're interested in. Okay. You just answer what they're interested in. And so, um, it's short. Again, we're not there to just turn this into a giant recruiting presentation and we're there to tr- teach them about their skin. And so at the end, once they're done, you say, okay, so I want your interest level on a scale of one to 10. What would be your interest level in starting a Mary Kay business? One is like never in a million years and 10 is like sign me up today. So just write your number. There are no wrong numbers. We love all numbers. Write your honest number. Okay. So that's how you share at the table. Now that's kind of like to be. So you share your I story, you set it up. We've out of one, out of every group, there's one woman who would make a great consultant. Um, and I guess, so that's to be, this is to see you share a little bit of marketing. The number three is you offer product to anyone who, um, join, uh, so you offer free product, like a, a gift card, to them if they refer someone who joins your team. So you would say, um, no, I realize like this might not be for you, but I want you to know I pay very handsomely to women who are talent scouts for me. So now that you have this information, even if it's not for you, for anyone you refer who joins my team, I'm going to give you a $50 Mary Kay coupon or $50 Mary Kay gift certificate, okay, just for being a talent scout for me, all right? So that's the third part of a four-point recruiting plan, remember? And then the fourth part is at the very end of the appointment when you do your individual consultations. And you've been paying attention this whole time. You've figured out who's the sparkler, who's the one that people kind of look to, who's the one who um, maybe is sitting back quiet, but is very respectful and is tracking with you and is nodding. Who's the one who shared, you know, that she works um, at a hospital and is surrounded by women all the time. You know, you're looking around and you're thinking, who do you really want to join your team? Who do you really want to share with? And when you sit down at that individual consultation, you are not only armed with that entire appointment, kind of giving you an idea of who you want to share with, but you also have their own interest level. And so you see who is interested and who is not. So here's what you do with those numbers. Anyone who's a six and higher I don't do, I say you can't pick five because it's awkward in the middle. Anyone who's six and higher, I offer them more information, okay? Anyone who's lower than a five, I just invite them to be a hostess, right? And be my customer for the most part. But if there is someone I really, really want on my team who is lower than a five, I will still pursue her. Because even though she ranked it at a one or a two, sometimes a one or a two to one person is really a nine or a 10. You know what I mean? Um, And I have recruited people who were a number one when they first met me. Okay. So you just have no idea. So you want to make sure, again, you share with everyone, but you pursue the people who are interested and the ones you want. So what you're going to do is you just pick one or two people. You don't need to pick the whole group because again, you want to make them feel special. You want to make them feel important. And you probably don't want everyone there to join your team. I mean, if they do, great, but you're pursuing one or two. And so what that looks like is, um, you know, at the very end, you've closed the sale, you booked the follow-up appointment, and then you're looking at it and you're saying, you know, Sarah, I see you're a seven and I have to let you know, you know, I was watching you and you were just so charismatic and I could tell that you really carry a lot of influence with your friends and you're someone who we would really, I'd really love to work with. You know, could I give you more information? Would you be interested in learning more about Mary Kay? There you go. And you can handle it after the appointment or you can set up coffee with her within 24 hours or a phone call. And um, there you go. Now say it's someone who's a two, but you really want on your team. You know, Karen, I'm looking at this and I see you're only a two, but I just, I, I feel like I, you know, I've just been watching you. 
and you are so sure of yourself and you carry yourself with such poise and confidence and I really appreciated how you tracked with me and you were just someone I would really love to work with. So I realize that it doesn't look like Mary Kay is something you're really interested in, but is there any way I could get more of your opinion on our business? And um, for your time, it takes just like 20 minutes. I'm going to offer you a free mascara or look at her profile card and a product that she wants that she's not getting half off or something like that. So you see how you're pursuing the ones you want. Um, so that's how that works. That's a four point recruiting plan. That is it, you guys. Super easy. Now for the follow-up appointments, coffee or um, a phone call, um, the best way to learn how to do that is again, to do it with your director for the first few times. So you would immediately text me and we'd set that up. Um, but there is an outline that I follow that's shared on our Dropbox. So you can see that. But the best way to learn it is with your director. Now, let's talk numbers. That's how you find your recruits. But here's the numbers because again, it is a numbers game. When you work the math, it is magical. If you do not work the math, work the math. It is not magical. It is a headache. So for the average new consultant, once you get outside your friends and your family, so your warm market, it is safe to assume that one in 10 women you share with join your team. Now, not always, but just typically once you get outside that warm market, it's because potentially you're not as confident, maybe you lack some of the skill because you just haven't done it, right? Um, so when you do some of those first ones with your sales director, you learn how to do it. And again, just like anything, it's a skill. You learn how to do it. So it's okay if it's not perfect. Um, one thing that really helped me is that with the right person, the wrong words won't matter. With the wrong person, the right words won't matter. Okay. So it's just more about connecting, right. And not being so worried about what you're saying. Okay. But anyway, one in 10, and that has to do with like helping overcome objections with recruiting so much of what holds people back is fear. And so part of your job as a recruiter is she's here, but she wants to be over here to get the starter kit ideally. So your job is help bridge the gap. Okay. Um, so once that switches to, you know, once your confidence builds, um, or you're more enthusiastic and passionate about the business, that number can drop. So, um, like for example, with, you know, a sales director, just a red jacket or someone who's done it a little bit more, it might be more like one in five, or when I'm sitting face to face with someone, it can be like one in three to one in four. Okay. Um, so one in 10, but then the average woman to make a decision needs about six layers. Um, so what is a layer? A layer is every time she's exposed to the Mary Kay opportunity. So a layer is you sharing marketing at the appointment. A layer is her coming to an event at the studio or, you know, at a guest event or your weekly meeting or something like that. A third layer could be her getting coffee with you. A fourth layer could be her talking to her sales director. Fifth layer could be her listening to a marketing tape or watching a video. A sixth layer could be her um, being a hostess, her being a customer, you giving her information. So all of those layers, the average person needs six of those exposures before they make a decision. Some people you will have never met and they come to an appointment and they sign up on the spot. For every one of those people, you'll have someone who takes 10, 15, 20 layers, okay? Now, to move fast, it's just how fast you layer people because you could take a year to go through six layers or you could take one week. So you um, do an appointment with a customer and you share marketing at that appointment and then you ask her to be a face model at the meeting and then after the meeting you give her literature to take home and you book a party with her that she had you know what i'm saying and so then it happens really fast and the whole point of this is because our end game is to get a yes or a no decision the worst position for both of them and you is someone who's like i don't know let me think about it because then you're like Ugh, you don't want to be crazy chasing them around trying to get their answer and feel like you're hounding them and she feels like she can't say no because she doesn't want to hurt your feelings and she's also just thinking about it too much and she's like in inner turmoil like no the end game is a yes or no decision because a no doesn't always mean never it just means not now people's circumstances change every six months so you 
someone who was a no six months ago could be yes today because you just never know. So again, but when they give you yes or no, you can say, great, yes, I can move you into the team member category or no, great, I can move you into the customer category and with your permission, I'll just check in as your life changes. Sound good? Great. That's your goal. Yes, where you know I love no's because it frees my space to not be thinking about them anymore. And what's going on in their head, right? So you want that yes or that no. And I will tell them that. Like my goal is to get a yes or a no. That way, like it's clear, it's done, and we can we can move ahead, right? No one wants to be waffling, right? That's why I don't allow fives. Straddling the fence hurts. It's uncomfortable. Okay. Um, so you always want to follow up. So in general, if you do power starts, 30 faces in 30 days, and you layer people, it's safe to assume that you could recruit three people in that month. And the more you do it, and again, this is working out of your warm market. When you're working with people you have a lot of influence with, um, I mean, it's easier to book with them. It's easier to recruit with them because you have a lot of rapport with them than you do compared to when you're working with people who you've never met before. Um, so three well-layered people will join your team. Um, so again, there is so much freedom in the numbers because if you get like seven no's in a row and you're like, okay, but one in 10, or even maybe it's one in five, then that means like some people are joining your team too soon. Like, holla, yay, get excited. So freedom, freedom in numbers, you guys. So that is how you build your team. We book appointments, we sell the product, we take care of our customers, we coach those appointments, and then we share at the parties using the Mary Kay four-point recruiting plan. We follow up, we are stable because we're working the numbers, and with that recipe, you can move fast and build a really solid foundation. Thanks for watching.